Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my summer garden plans for the summer of 2023. I thought it would be really fun to make a video to share with you guys what I'm planning on growing, kind of what our setup is, um, what I've already got started as the garden season has technically begun. A few years ago, it was 2020, I think, um, I did my very first vegetable garden. So I think this is my third year doing it. And it has been like such a fun, like new thing to learn. I love being able to like grow some of our own produce. I love involving my kids in the process, especially this year. I think Hayden, who's my oldest, who's now four, will be like really into it. And it's just such an awesome way to connect with your food, to get outside, to have like just the satisfaction of you know, starting something and working on it and seeing it through and getting your hands in the soil and being out in the sunshine. It really is like such a wonderful like life practice. I have totally caught the gardening bug and fallen in love with it. I don't do anything that is like extreme. I'm very much, you know, trying to do things that I know that I can manage. And each year we're trying to scale up a little bit, a little bit, a little bit more. So I thought I would take you guys through what I'm planning on doing this year in the garden. And then maybe like midsummer, I can kind of give you guys an update and see how it's going if you would be interested. But I know that a lot of you enjoyed my like first garden vegetable series I did a few years back where I walked you through literally like in real time as I was learning everything, like how to start seeds and how to build raised garden beds yourself and when to actually transplant your seedlings and how they, you know, watching them grow and then when they all died and the produce that we got, I brought you through the whole thing and it was really fun to document that. So I thought I'd bring a little bit of that back here on my channel. So I'm first gonna walk you guys through what I'm planting this year. So this year for my vegetable garden, I have a slightly different um, take on what I'm trying to get out of it. So the past three years, we've basically grown a bunch of vegetables for fresh eating and you know we would give some away, And but I didn't really, um, I don't think I preserved anything. And this summer, I am really trying to preserve just a little bit to kind of get in the, like learn how to do it, to get in the motion, um, to understand like what goes into it so that this can be kind of A, a skill that I learn and then B, something that I can continue to build on year after year. So this year I did a little bit um, like more variety and less quantity of vegetables so that I can um, like have extra on hand to actually preserve instead of just having enough that we would eat fresh. And then another thing we're doing this year is we did add two more raised beds. So we have a total of six raised beds now, which is by no means like a massive garden, but it's also like a significant size, at least in my opinion. So we had four before, I've only ever done four. So this year we're doing six and the plan is to just keep adding like a couple more beds every year until you know a few years down the line, um, several years down the line, we have like a pretty massive garden that actually grows a significant amount of our produce. At least that's the goal. But we're definitely taking it one step at a time. This is actually my first summer where I'm not going to have like a small baby in tow. So I'm actually really kind of excited to have, have a little bit more freedom to just get in the garden more and actually have like the energy and maybe a little bit more of the time to put towards preserving. But anyway, I wanna share with you guys what exactly um, I'm growing this year and everything has already been started. So we, I'll show you like what's growing so far. But as far as what I'm, like what varieties um, I am growing, I'm gonna share with you guys. So I have just the seeds here because I do start from seed. So when, if you're totally new to gardening, you can either start your plants from seed yourself or you can just buy plant starts from your local nursery or um, you know, uh, like Home Depot or something like that. Um, it's totally up to you. There's no right or wrong way. The thing that's nice about seeds it's, is it's way more cost effective because you know a pack of seeds is just a few dollars versus, and that will give you up to, you know, like this has 250 seeds in it. So these are uh, heirloom um, tomatoes. So I can make 
a ton of plant starts off of those few dollars versus if you're buying the plant starts themselves, it's obviously gonna be a lot more costly. So it's just kind of whatever you wanna do. Um, and starting seeds really is not that complicated. I feel like I'll share with you kind of how I have been winging it <laughs> through the years and it seems to turn out just fine. Hey guys, I just wanted to take a quick second to tell you about my nutrition and intuitive eating program, Mindful Eating Made Simple. This program is all of my knowledge, education, tips, expertise, experience, all in one place where I teach you everything you need to know about not just nutrition, but also how to eat in a way that is healthy and balanced for the lifelong. I am a firm believer that you need to be equipped both with robust nutrition knowledge that makes sense, that can be applied to your daily life, but also understanding how to eat intuitively because I believe that that is the only way to enjoy eating but not go overboard and be able to maintain health and vitality through your lifetime. So if you are just done with being on a cycle of dieting and trying this diet and that diet and failing and trying again and all of that nonsense, or maybe you're just trying to eat healthy, but you find nutrition confusing or you find it stressful and you feel like you kind of end up turning it into a diet in itself and you just can't do it in a way that is relaxed and sustainable and balanced, then this program is for you. I will personally be here to hold your hand and walk you through as you build on this new knowledge and make these changes. My mission is to help women feel confident with healthy eating, but without the complex. And that is exactly what I do in this program. So I will leave a link down below if you are ready to join me inside the program and maybe you're still on the fence. And if that's the case, I would highly recommend taking my free mindful eating mind set masterclass where you are going to start to learn how to break down that diet mentality, how to eat healthy for the long term in a way that's balanced and sustainable, and also avoid some of the most common mistakes people make when it comes to healthy eating. If this sounds like something you are needing in your life, I so hope to see you inside the program. I want to help you make the changes that are actually going to give you your freedom back, give you your life back, and allow you to eat in a way that has both enjoyment but nourishment at the same time. I'm going to go through what I got. So um, I get, I've always gotten our seeds from Johnny's. It's a website. Um, they have a ton of stuff and they give like really good instructions. And I've just always had good experience with like germination. The seeds always seem to do a really well, good job. So um, that's where I've been getting my seeds from. So we have sugar snap peas, which I've never grown before. So that's exciting. That's um, a first time. These are um, San Marzano um, tomatoes, which these are, I'm pretty sure these are the paste. Yeah. So these are the paste tomatoes. So I've never made paste tomatoes before, but they are apparently the best for making like tomato paste or sauces, things like that, that you're going to go on to preserve or can. Um, so that's why I'm planting these this year. And I actually am aiming to plant the most of these. Cause again, I'm really trying to, um, grow more to go on to preserve so I can kind of practice that skill. Um, next I have zucchini squash. I did these last year. They were super prolific. I had like a funny reel on my Instagram cause Bo was born in July and I like did, literally didn't even look at the garden for a few weeks. And the zucchinis were like the size of baseball bats. It was crazy. Um, the next here is these are um, just like regular, like big, you know, standard tomatoes. These are the German Johnson, um, variety. Uh, maybe I should be telling you the actual varieties, but, um, I'll link them down below. Um, and then the next one I have onions. So I have, these are the Talon F1 organic yellow onions. They're storage onions. Um, another thing I am doing this year. So last year I did like some onions just to grow more for like an experiment and to have some to eat within like the next few weeks. But this year I'm doing an, an almost an entire bed of onions because I want to try and store them. So see how many I can grow and how far we can get, um, you know, into the next towards the next year without having to buy any onions. I think that'd be really cool. Um, okay. And then, um, I actually bought eggplant seeds and I ended up not planting these. These are the only ones, um, cause I was planning on building more raised beds, but we do, um, cedar, which is excellent as far as withstanding the elements without being like pressure treated or chemical treated, which you don't, you don't want any kind of chemical treatment on your wood. That's going to be leaching into your soil and therefore the food that you're eating. So cedar is very, um, it, withstands the elements and will stand the test of time very well without any of, you know, any kind of treatment to it, but it's very expensive. So we decided budget wise, let's just do two raised beds. So eggplant, unfortunately got the boot this year. I did grow it last year and it did great, but we just don't really eat a ton of eggplant. Like I love a good eggplant parm, but 
we're not going to be eating that like multiple times a week. So um, I ended up deciding not to plant these this year, but next year when I have a little bit more room, I would love to plant a few of those. Um, and then I also have our um, cucumbers. These are the Picolina F1 organic cucumbers. They always do super well. And then lastly, I have um, the Ovation Greens mix, which is basically like a spring mix. So those are um, the different varieties that I'm planting this year. Okay, and then so as far as the actual plan, so I went ahead and I created like a garden plan for myself, and this is in my like mom life binder, which I mentioned recently in a video. I'm gonna do a whole video on like life organization because I've recently totally got my life together and it's been really nice. Anyway, so I have um, a whole page in here on my garden plan for 2023. So I put all of the varieties that I'm growing. I also have space here for herbs which I have not, um, I didn't start any herbs from seed. I am gonna do herbs this year, but I'm just gonna grab a few plant starts. I wanted to do a whole raised bed of herbs, but again, with budget in mind, we decided to scale back on how much more we were going to add. So I think I'm just gonna get a, a few big pots and maybe just do like basil and parsley and you know maybe one or two others that I know that we'll use. Um, so I haven't gotten there yet, but um, then I have all of our six raised beds here. So we're gonna be doing snap peas and spring mix together, cucumber, cherry tomato, zucchini and bell pepper, paste tomato and tomato. We're gonna to do a whole bed of strawberries. We're gonna try our hand at a strawberry patch this year, which I've never done before. And then we've got a whole other bed of just onions. So again, trying to do a little bit more for like the preservation and um, storage of things versus just a lot of different things. Um, you know, we could jam these beds with more, but Maybe we'll be able to make some jam, some strawberry jam, um, and store some onions. And then I also have listed here spacing for each of these. Um, so I know when I go to plant where exactly, like how many I need to be doing in each bed, because that's super important. You need to pay attention to how far apart those plants need to be spaced, because they're not all the same. Um, and then just on the back here, I have like some different notes. Um, I wrote starting onions, um, how many I'm gonna put in the beds, um, and how exactly to grow those specific ones based on the directions from Johnny's. Um, and then I have some harvest notes, just like um, particular things that maybe I didn't know, or I wanna make sure that I remember when we're going to actually harvest produce. I wrote a couple notes down. And then um, I have here fall crop. Um, I wanna do more sugar snap peas. I wanna do pumpkins and I wanna do garlic this year. So I wrote that down to keep it in the back of my head. And then I have next year potatoes and eggplant question mark. Um, potatoes I actually am going to grow. I forgot to mention that. Um, I haven't started them yet. I'm a little behind the ball, but I did order um, like potato, start potatoes from Johnny's as well. And it literally comes as like a bag of potatoes and you cut them up and there's like a specific way that you plant them and you like mound the soil. I haven't done it yet, so I don't know exactly, exactly what I'm doing, but um, I am just going to do those in grow bags. I got those off of Amazon. Um, I can share those with you too and I'll link them down below because again, don't have ton of raised bed space this year. We're working on a more minimal scale than we had intended. Um, so I'm using these inexpensive grow bags, which are apparently really great for growing potatoes. So we'll see how that goes. If you are going to do any kind of vegetable gardening this year, I mean, it's a little, it's a little late to start your own seeds, but you could certainly get plant starts um, and still have an awesome vegetable garden this summer. Personally, I wait until after Mother's Day to plant. Technically, our, for our last frost day is like mid-April, um, but I go by what my grandmother always did with her garden, and she said never plant until after Mother's Day, and I have followed that, and every year, it has worked out to my advantage because every year there has been like a cold snap between mid-April and Mother's Day and I'm always really glad that I waited. So um, that's when I plant. There's different garden zones. You can just Google, I think I'm 7A or 7B, I don't know. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head, but you can look to see where you are to kind of figure out your last frost date and like when you should be planting. Um, but I would suggest that you keep some kind of notes um, so that you know like what you planted and where you planted it and a place where you can write down like what dates you actually put things in the ground or in the seed starting trays so you can just kind of keep track and have like a better idea of um, so when you look back next year it's super helpful to have that information I've never been this organized about it until this year I usually just have like a scrap piece of paper 
that I have to like dig for and find the next year. But it's always so helpful to have that information ready to go because you can hit the ground running next year. Um, and it's just really helpful to kind of know where your head was at during the process. So I would definitely recommend keeping some kind of um, note keeping or you know just some kind of general plan written down so that you can reference it for your garden for the following year. Okay, so like I said, seed starting has already begun. So I am going to share with you guys what I have got going. I have a couple of seed starting trays filled with um, little seedlings. And then I also have a couple of plants that I already um, planted out in the garden. So there are cool weather crops, which are you plant early in spring. They like that chilly weather. And by the time the heat of the summer hits, they are done. They bolt, um, meaning they start to like grow up really high and they start to release their seeds and they're no longer edible at that point. Um, but then you have your like heat, warm weather crops that you don't want to put out when it's chilly because they'll die. Um, you have to wait until they're going to be safe out there and you want to make sure that you um, do like a hardening off process, which is where you put them outside for like an hour or two one day to just expose them to the sunlight and the breeze to kind of get them accustomed. And then the next day you do it for two hours. And then the next day you do it for three hours and you just kind of build up over like five to seven days. So that way when you put them out there, they're not completely shocked by the elements and die. I've made that mistake before. <laughs> One of my years, I just like forgot to harden off my plants. I think that's when Hadley was like kind of a newborn and I was just not all there. And half my plants did die and it ended up but you know, it was fine. Like literally half my starts died, but we still ended up having like a pretty nice garden that summer. Although it was not nearly as prolific as I had intended. So my cool weather crops this year, I just have two. That is the spring mix. Um, and then also our sugar snap peas. So those are out in the garden and I can show you that. And then all the other things that I have started, um, are in, um, my house in windowsills currently. So I will show you that. Okay. You guys, so here is my first, um, seed starting tray. So all of these guys here, these are all onions. Um, I didn't even label, I didn't put labels on these because it was easy enough to tell the difference. So these are all onions. Um, I actually need to go through and thin them. Um, I planted five seeds in each little um, seed you know, pocket and um, I need to go through and thin them down to three, meaning just you know cut off like the weaker ones and leave the three best looking ones. And so this is basically like a kind of like a cluster method that I'm doing, um, which I've never done this before. So this should be an interesting experiment this year. So instead of planting like each individual little onion start, um, I'm gonna be planting a cluster of them just a little bit further apart. So we'll see kind of how that goes. So those are all onions growing. And then over here are my cucumber plants. So they're coming in nicely. Um, so they are, you can tell they kind of lean towards the window a little bit. Obviously they're going to be stretching towards the light. So I just like every day I just flip like which side, um, I flip them around. So then they stretch the other way and that seems to work fine. Obviously having like a grow light situation where they're going straight up is most ideal, but I, you know, I'm just kind of wing it every year and every year it's turned out just fine. Okay. And then here is my other one. So let me flip this around so you guys can see the labels. Okay. So this has a lot more variety in here. You can see these giant ones in the middle that are definitely stretching big time. They're getting a little leggy. Um, these are zucchini, so they are like big fat plants. <laughs> um, and they're, you know, they're, they're definitely getting leggy, but because I don't have grow lights, this is just kind of what happens. But when I plant them, I just kind of plant them deep enough so that they're not flopping over. And I don't know, that always seems to work out just fine. So these here in the middle, these big giant ones are zucchini if you guys can see that and then over here i have these are just the um standard tomatoes like the regular these are the german johnson just your like regular vine big tomato um and again i need to do some thinning on these two as well but then over here we have my cherry tomatoes so they look the same but they're going to create a slightly obviously different tomato in the end, but they're all coming up and they look great. So then these two rows are my peppers and these always are the last to sprout every year. I think I accidentally stuck a tomato in here and a pepper in here, which is why this one is sprouting. But 
There's, as you can see, there's nothing here, but I'm not worried because they are always the last to come up for me every year. Cause I always just, I plan everything at the same time to make life a little easier, which, you know, maybe I'm not supposed to do that. But, um, anyway, so still waiting on peppers to sprout, but they should pop up soon. They always do. And then here are my paste tomatoes. So as you can see, I grew a bunch of these way more than the others and they have all sprouted. Um, there's just one little baby sprout over here, but otherwise they've all come in really nicely are growing well. Um, again, I need to do some thinning still. I haven't done that yet, but we are coming along. Okay guys, so I'm now headed out to the garden. You saw my indoor seedlings. Now I'm gonna show you what's going on in the garden outside and um, kind of what our setup is and what's growing so far. Okay, so here is our setup. We need to get fence this fence that is kind of janky, but it works just fine. Um, we need to get the fence back up and running ASAP or else we're gonna have deer in here real soon, which I obviously don't want. So those are the two new raised beds. We still have to get some um, like fill dirt in there and then topsoil and compost to fill them. They're just the blank beds. But then these are the four beds that we already have. Um, mostly just weeds growing in here i need to weed them i need to add new compost i need to get the beds like fully prepped this one also the same this has the most this is actually um spinach from last year that is growing up this like real light green as you can see um, because it bolted it went to seed and then the seeds dropped and now they're coming up but we don't plan to have spring mix in here this year. I like to rotate the crop, like the plants so that, you know, you don't want to really be planting the same thing in the same beds every year. Um, so we need to kind of get all of that sorted, but we're not close to outdoor planting yet. So we have some time, but over here, these little raised beds are my cold weather crops. So this is the spring mix starting to come up. So before we know it, this is going to be like lush and prolific. I'll be able to come out here with scissors or a knife, just hack some off for a salad um, and then it will grow right back. So this will just kind of be the salad bar that keeps on giving for a little while um, until it gets really hot and then this again will bolt and it'll be done. Um, but then we can rip that out and plant something else here, which is kind of cool. So that's called succession planting. Um, then over here, these are my um, sugar snap peas. So they are growing. Eventually they're going to need, these are like a climbing, um, so they would want like a trellis or I use just usually tomato cages for like cucumbers um, and tomatoes obviously, but anything that wants to grow up, I just use tomato cages because it's just easier than building a trellis and that has worked out fine for me. So these are also coming in. I've never grown these before, so super excited to see how that turns out. Okay, so I went and grabbed those grow bags so I could show you guys. So again, I found these on Amazon. They were very, very inexpensive. So they're basically, I think these are the 10 gallon ones. So they're kind of like these big black felt bags and they're essentially plant containers and they, um, you know, they drain water really well, obviously. Um, there's apparently a lot of benefits to using these. I have never tried them myself before, but I've heard a lot of good things. And this is what we're gonna do our potatoes in this year. So we've got raised beds for the all the vegetables. We're gonna do potatoes in here, and then I'd like to do a couple pots of um, some herbs. But I also wanted to share with you guys, I grabbed, just so you can kind of see, because I literally had no idea. Like, I ordered potato, are they tubers? I can't remember, they have a name. But I ordered like potato starts, having no idea what was going to show up on my doorstep. And it's just literally a, um, a bag of potatoes. So apparently you do wanna make sure, like if, you, if you're grabbing potatoes from the grocery store, apparently that doesn't really work out so well. I'm not sure why, but maybe someone in the comments could explain. Um, I don't know off the top of my head. So it is recommended that you buy, you know, potatoes that are meant for planting or planting. Um, so these are the Elba um, organic potatoes, and I got five pounds of them. So you basically cut them up, and it's literally it's a sack of potatoes. So as far as I know, you just cut them up. Um, to where they have some of like the eyes whereas where like the sprouts actually come out you need like a few of those on each one um, and then you plant them and I'm going to plant them 
in these grow bags and just a little bit of soil in the bottom. And then as they start to grow, you continue to add soil and you know mix with compost so it's nice and um, nutrient dense on top of it. And that is how you grow potatoes. But this is all new to me, so that's gonna be a fun experiment this year. But that is my plan for 2023. I'm super excited to start to see the garden grow. It amazes me every year. Like when I plant the seeds, every year I'm like, I don't think this is gonna work. Like, I don't think these tiny little seeds are gonna come up through this soil. Like, do I have enough light? I don't know. And I always doubt it, but every year without fail, like magic, they shoot up and it's just such a cool process to watch. If you have kids, I'm sure they would love to be a part of it with you as far as planting them and getting their hands in the dirt and the mud and actually like watching them grow. It's really cool. And then when you actually plant them out in the garden, they become massive and it's just, it's a pretty amazing process to watch. And then you also get really high quality, super fresh, delicious produce out of it as well. So I'm super excited for this summer. I'm excited to grow a bunch of good stuff. I'm excited to preserve a little bit of it to start to learn that skill. If you have never gardened before, I could not encourage you more to just start. Even if you don't have like a backyard or any patch of land, you don't even need that. Like if you have, if you're in an apartment in an apartment and you have a balcony, get yourself a, a big pot and do like one tomato plant and tend to it and prune it and water it and watch it grow and eat those delicious homegrown tomatoes. Don't think you need to have this, you know, a big area or raised beds or a farm in order to do this. You can do it wherever you are. And you might think, you know, I I hear a lot of people say like, oh, one day, you know, we're gonna we're gonna move and we're gonna have more space and we're gonna do a garden and that's great. I think that's a great goal to work towards, but don't wait to start until you get to that point because there is so much, it is a big learning curve I've found with gardening. It's just so much to learn. And if you try and jump in with no experience and do a bunch of different things, it's going to make your head hurt. That's what happened to me the first year. And it went pretty well, but it was just, it felt like so much to learn and there, it is very time sensitive and it was actually kind of stressful. Um, so if you just do a little bit at a time and you get used to like understanding how to amend soil and like what compost is and when to plant seeds and how to prune certain plants, if you learn on a smaller scale and just scale up a bit each year, it's a lot easier. So that way you're not biting off more than you can chew and no pun intended. But I encourage you to grow something this summer. Maybe it's just some herbs. They're going to make your food taste amazing. It's going to be way cheaper than buying them from the store and it's going to be something that you can grow and tend to and watch and learn a little bit about gardening um, this year. So I hope that you guys will take this video and run with it and go plant something. If you are already planning your own summer garden, I'm sure there's people watching this that have much more, you know, much larger, more lush, more productive gardens than me. I am still very much a newbie. Um, I would consider myself in the world of gardening. I would love to hear about what you're planting this summer. Um, I love just, I love to talk about this stuff. I find it really inspiring. So thank you guys so much for watching this video video. If you are new, I would absolutely love for you to subscribe and join my little community here on YouTube. But that is all I have for this video. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.